Hey, this is Notzer, and this is Steel Division Normandy 44. It is an RTS game set in World War II, specifically Normandy. You can play a single player campaign where you take on the axes, you try and open up that western front. You can play as the axis and try and stop the allies from opening up that front. And the idea of the game is that skirmishes and multiplayers are going to have set up battle groups, armies in history that you would recognize and you sort of build your battle group like a deck, like a trading card deck. You've got 80 or 90 options. You have to whittle it down to 20 or 30 units. Those are the only units that you can bring into combat. These different units have different costs associated with them, and different battle groups have different resource generation depending on the phase of the battle. There are three phases, A, B, and C. There's a deploy zone, and there's territory control. If you have the majority, 51%, you get one tick point, I think, every second. If you have 60% of a territory, you get two, 70%, three. And you try and work towards a total goal, which is dependent on what the multiplayer decided to create, right? It's just like any RTS where there's a lot of customization on how, what you define the win condition. So, I am in the airborne. We are in phase one right now, or phase A, excuse me. And I have my units. Obviously, I have 90, if you look at the top left, 90 resources generated every 30 seconds or a minute. Then what I do is I open up my unit collection. I select the unit that I want to bring onto the battlefield, just like what I'm doing right now. I've got anti-tank, anti-air. I'm going to bring in an anti-tank 37mm gun. Now, you can see that there are some units that are grayed out. They need to be in phase B or C in order to be used. Also, I need to have enough resources to even pull the unit. But in general, it's pretty cool the way they've designed this. This allows them to have extremely strong moments in the game for different battle groups. Airborne, extremely powerful at the beginning of the game. They really do have the potential to assault. Armored core probably requires that you wait until you get your big tanks out, you know, your tigers and your king tigers. So they need to play defensively initially until they get the big, big powerful units on a battlefield. And they are big and powerful. So you can see the unit icon. Blue for the allies, red for the Axis. And yes, that's how it holds up. If you play as Axis, you will be playing as red. There is a green box with a number that is telling you how many units are left in, or infantry are left in that unit. If you obviously kill all those infantry, there is nothing left of the unit. If there isn't a box, well, there's only one unit. The wings are related to the airborne. Airborne units have protection from being surrounded. A normal unit, if it's surrounded, it's just going to be wiped out. But airborne, they expect to be surrounded because they're going to be behind enemy lines. So they don't become pinned down as easily as a generic unit. The pin down mechanic basically locks the unit in place and forces them to not attack. You could theoretically wipe them out because they can't move, or you could force them to surrender because they're not stupid. They don't want to die, if they can avoid it, of course, and that's the plan. So I think the game does a good job of communicating, plus or minus, of armor. My anti-armor unit can do a damage. It can overmatch and actually damage a tank that has six armor, like that particular tank on the road. You can see that there is a yes, an enemy Axis unit that does 10. Roger. If I have more armor than 10, it can't do damage. It'll just bounce off harmlessly, you know, unless it gets into a certain range. I think then you get like a plus minus scenario where even at point blank range, you can pin the armor. But that's the idea of the game. Everything about the unit is communicated to me. 
I don't have to go look up stats that are sort of hidden. Every stat that's important is in the game. The stars that you might see under a unit, that is experience and leadership potential. The most stars you can have are three stars, and that is an extremely experienced unit. They might be getting the star from a leader unit that provides an aura. There's also ammo aura to refill units. It's important that you watch over. You could have a unit that, uh, let's say, a, a king tiger runs out of ammo. He's firing all day long. You need to go resupply that unit, otherwise it's useless. But that's the way the game works. Now we're in phase B. You'll see that our income in the top left corner has gone up. We can bring in B units and A units if we so choose. But we still have to maintain control of the territory. Now, I have just now started gaining ground on the enemy. There's enemy aircraft. You can destroy enemy aircraft. You want them to fall back and you want to follow up with aircraft. I can't really do it right now. I just had an AA platform set up. So the idea of my particular style in this game, set up infantry in brush, use it as cover. Your cursor will change from white, yellow to green. Green is the most protected. Yellow is average and obviously, if you're out in the open, you got nothing. And I'm, you can notice I'm bringing up the range indicator. It tells me how high of a chance I have of hitting the target, line of sight, distance. I access that by pressing C. It's very useful, very useful, in fact, if you're playing the game. You can select an area, check out what the enemy's line of sight would be from their point of view. So it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna bring up units. I got a grasshopper that I called, and I'm going to be using it to scout out the enemy and hopefully see them. There is clearly an enemy unit in the center pushing forward towards my units. You can see that bulge as it's moving into my scout. The binoculars obviously scout. I, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. The aircraft's flying overhead, and oh my god! Enemy AA, I did not expect that. He, fall back, fall back! <laughs> Where do you need us? Uh, scout's trying to get back in the brush. I've got my tank. The tank requires line of sight. It also requires someone spotting for that tank so he can do damage. And look at, look at his location. I have to move basically into that bushy area. I think it's a farm or something like that. Maybe it's uh, whatever. I have to move forward in order to engage the targets. I don't want to move too far forward. I could run into an anti-tank. I really like keeping my infantry units in a defensive posture, force the enemy to push forward because I do have an advantage, and use my tanks or my mortar fire or my aircraft to take out high value targets as they approach. It works pretty well. I'm not, you know, it's not shocking. Wow. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. I'm, you know, it's like... Uh, enemy was trying to push forward. Of course. Oh, oh, here we go, here we go. Just called in a P-47 Thunderbolt. This is a very iconic aircraft, and I sent it to take out the anti-tank unit on the ground. And Oh, yes! Rocket that guy down immediately take that unit out and that's exactly what aircraft should do because you call it for a set mission it has to go back it has to rearm they can make it extremely effective at its stated mission i really like the way it feels it feels like i need support anti-tank unit down the road i need aircraft to take it out you call it like you would in real life. On the radio, it brings it in, it does its job, but it's not completely broken by flying, continuously flying over the territory. It gets the job done, move on, and then you have to try and decide what you're gonna do. Push forward against the enemy? I'm trying to decide. Uh, do I want to push forward? Anti-tank gun? Not exactly 
the best that AA gun is shooting my aircraft as it's trying to scout. It looks like the enemy units are trying to reinforce, but we have just pushed forward so far. Try it's so far, in fact, that my mortars don't have range, so I'm gonna move them deeper into the foliage. Keep calling up those tanks, baby. Use the roads too, just like what you would expect. Roads allow you to move quicker. The AI is going to try and use the road to get to the target location that you set. And here we go. Yeah, now we're close enough. Oh, oh, the enemy, the enemy tried to use a Stuka dive bomber on me. And look, it pinned me down. I cannot attack while pinned down. I am susceptible to an infantry unit trying to cause me to surrender. However, I doubt very seriously that they want to push forward. I mean, we've got a pretty established front over there in the center. It would be suicidal for them to push, but notice the unit completely unusable right now. I'm moving up my tank, trying to look for an avenue of approach where I have line of sight blocking most of it. I love how the cursor just communicates that in real time, so you can just move it around find the hedgerow and oh there there are so many hedgerows that are all over Normandy it's great it's great I love history so much and it's so fun to experience it like this all right so I move my tank to try and take out enemy anti-tank it looks like they keep moving them up in this area I gotta be careful though I am vulnerable to that gun oh great finally my mortars <laughs> Mortars are ready to go. This guy's like moving over the open ground. No, you don't. Not one step further. Gosh, I just would love this being taken out. I still have plenty of ammo on it. You can see the ammo counter in the bottom right. It's 52 out of 55, so I should be able to engage. The enemy's scout aircraft is trying to fall back. Maybe we can kill it. My aircraft is overhead, and he's pretty healthy. I just love how they designed it. It's simple enough to pick up and play, but it has a lot of depth to really shine for someone who invests time and effort into it. Those are the best games, right? Blizzard games always do this. A bunch of games through time have done this. It's just, it's just great. It's great. So yeah, I gotta pay attention to my resource. What do I want to bring? Do I want to bring infantry? Do I need more infantry? I don't want to use up all my tanks in a set position. I decide to call them in. They're using a vehicle. You can disembark the vehicle to get them quickly to the front. You obviously want to use a vehicle, but then you can leave the vehicle and get into the ground scenario. You can do that close to the front or far away. Enemies falling back. If I could continue the pursuit, I would absolutely devastate him. My Thunderbolt's ready. All right. Let's find another artillery piece on the ground and take it down. Oh, it's so glorious. Watch this, watch this. Take it out. Boom. Oh, headshot. I, I can't get enough of that. It, it's just too rewarding to see that. And he's just like... Another enemy taken out. Boy, we're, we're just... All fronts are pushing forward. We're finding a lot of success at this stage of the battle. I'm trying to move my tanks forward. You can see sort of the scorched earth area on the left side. The enemy is just not really interested in staying in that territory. And I don't blame him, of course. Want more Thunderbolts, baby? I don't have enough resources. But it's about to tick over, and yes! There we go! Another Thunderbolt. So what I would recommend is you get as many Thunderbolts as you can. Obviously, if there's a fighter, you need to pick up a anti-fighter to protect your dive bomber, which that's basically what the Thunderbolt is, using rockets. But it's so effective at taking out defensive positions for the enemy, you know. Anti-tank, anti-aircraft, the MG-42 nest that the Germans love to use. And you can see the reload is 
pretty long, so getting as many as you can out on the battlefield will really help you take out these targets that are just devastating. So what would the enemy do to counter it? Well, they would get AA. The AA would cause it to fall back. And they would also get their fighters. When the enemy unit, the aircraft, is falling back, the fighter can go in and mop it up. There's a set hit point left on the target once they're falling back. If you can kill them before they're able to get completely back, they can't be reloaded, they can't be repaired, and the unit is gone. You have to spend the unit cost for it and do all that again. Now the enemy AI is not going to do that though. It's 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 a medium quality AI. It's just, you know, also we're just trying to do our best. We want you to learn how to play the game. We don't want to crush your soul in the first skirmish that you take. Moving up my units on the left side. My right side is going up against, oh, whoa. We've got an enemy tank on the battlefield. My tank is pulling back, which, you know, my tank's actually better than that, straight up. But it's still scary. Yeah, it's still scary. It has the potential to penetrate it. And I, I accidentally moved my unit outside the brush and I should not have done that. I'm trying to get it back in as soon as possible. Enemy aircraft overhead, enemy aircraft falling back. Can we kill it before? And yeah, you, you'll notice that there's some vehicles. I didn't disembark my infantry from it. And tanks are great against infantry, clearly. I don't know why the Grenadier went right next to my Sherman. Shermans are really good at killing infantry. I hope they, <laughs> I hope they realize that it's like, yeah. Yeah, pretty good. So we're in the final phase of the game. Phase C. The enemies can call up their big guns. I can call up my big guns. I have the highest income of the game. I'm just trying to take the enemy on one at a time, use line of sight to my advantage. My light tank is sort of behind the hedgerow, so the enemy tank cannot engage it. Obviously the infantry are not protected. And I have a dive bomber. I have a, actually, I have a full-size bomber, sorry. B-26B Marauder. And I'm gonna try and go after one of the tanks. This tank is sort of pushing a bulge into my defense. Let's see this sucker. Here come the bombs, baby. Fall back. You better fall back. I kind of feel like the Thunderbolt's better at taking out tanks. The bomber's better at just trying to force an area to fall back. I should be using my P Thunderbolt. Ah, P-47 Thunderbolt. Go take that tank out. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to take out this tank, I guess. Mm -hmm. Interesting choice, not sir. Here goes the mission. I just love watching this. This is, this is... I can't tell you how many RTS games I've played, and... The units don't feel as powerful as they should, or they feel so powerful that why would you make any other unit, right? I never get that feeling playing this game. The strengths and weaknesses of each unit is very apparent, and you need to make sure that you keep up with the resource coming in, bringing in units to help you out. You don't want it to store up too much, just like every other RTS. I don't really need fighters. They don't have a lot of anti-air in the sky, so I choose to use some more mortars in order to lay down some suppression on the infantry that are trying to set up in the hedgerows, or maybe even work on the MG nest. The Stuka, I believe, tried to bomb us, yes, and I could use a fighter for that. And yeah, I'll come on. Unloading. Gotta unload. <laughs> Ugh. I gotta get better. You can hotkey, by the way. If you control, use a numpad or the numbers over your QWERTY key, you could set the unit and go back to it really quickly. I'm trying to check out this. Look at this. Look at it. You can just see how big the... Oh, yeah. Thunderbolt came and took it out. Now, you can also call in naval artillery. This is pretty cool. You'll see it. I have a naval artillery unit that is like a command unit. I think it's a duck. And it's moving into location. 
I can do uh, three types. I can do just general bombing barrage of the area. I shouldn't call it barrage. I should call it scattering. It's general scattering of an area. It's not going to be accurate, but it will be suppressive. I can do an intermediate fire for effect, which I've chosen. And that's the indicator. I can also do barrage, which is a very tightly packed, accurate shot. It all depends on how you want to use your unit. And yes, you need to be somewhat close to the front in order to use it. And yeah, tanks that can be damaged, transmission failure and all that stuff, just like a real tank, it can still fire. It just can't move very quickly. And here is my my naval bombardment. Yes, we took out the anti-tank. Or was it the MG? I swear it had artillery. The MG-42 can't do anti-tank. And oh, it's just... This, this eastern side, I'm just trying to hold out. The western is really pushing forward very effectively. Oh! Someone shot my M4 on the road. This hedgerow, I really didn't pay attention. This hedgerow right here, it's sort of l shape is what's protecting my tanks. I should have moved it forward and used that as protection. So I'm going to keep sending more artillery onto it. Yeah, you can see me selecting each one. Barrage accurate, fire for effect, emergency, just to get it scattering around. Trying to decide what units I want to select. I've used up a lot of units. I've had a lot of success bringing them in. It won't be long before you achieve victory, sir. And yeah, we're getting pretty close to the end of this game. Now look, we're at 62%. So every 10% territory control after 50%, we gain a tick rate, a point. And yeah, the Stuka got shot down. And it stays on the map. It's really cool. Really cool. I've got, I think I got double anti-air, and plus, I think the M4s, they have anti-air as well. The Sherman can fire very effectively at the aircraft overhead if they, they're slow, like and scout aircraft would be. Oh, that Stuka got his bomb off. Where did he bomb? Oh, he bombed. He bombed my Sherman over there. Now, look at that unit. Do you see these tanks? He's calling in heavily armored tanks. 14 is the armor damage with 10 protection armor. <laughs> oh my god. The gun does 14 damage and the armor is 10. I can just barely do damage to it with my Sherman. My light tank can't do damage to him, but I can call in a Thunderbolt. And I absolutely should be calling in a Thunderbolt. Come on, baby. We're doing good. We're doing good. Roger. And here we go. Yeah, that's a good spot. You see how close the enemy is? Thunderbolt would be much better for those tanks in the open. Yeah. Yeah. Ready for order. They're on mission, too. The, the bomber's going to be on the left side. Here comes my Thunderbolt, too. Yeah, you see the naval bombardment was a little outside. Oh! Missed out on that one. Bombing unit is going. Yeah! We took out the tank in the top left. And, yeah, I'm using Barrage to target this Stug. Stug is pushing forward, and I'm very terrified of it. I'm hoping that he will move down past the hedgerow, or the trees, and then my M4 Sherman can be on its flank and shoot it in the side. And I'm trying to check where I have line of sight. Ooh. Man, he's bouncing shells because of his high armor. And yeah, you can just real-time check line of sight. It's great. It's great. Even if you're not familiar with the map, they give you the information to become familiar with the map. You know, RTS always feels like you, you have no chance against a player who's played it more than you because they... There's just so many nuances that isn't communicated. Well, guess what? A lot is communicated in this game. It tells you chance to hit the target, distance to the target. It doesn't hide all this stuff from you. It's great. It's great. I'm trying to use my my thunderbolt. Call it an emission. Ah, oh, it, it just feels so good. And I also called in my mustangs to try and take out the stukas so they don't do that drop crap thing before. Uh, man, heavily armored. 
really difficult to knock that particular tank, or it's an assault gun, right? Yeah, here's the Stuka calling my Mustang to try and take it out. Not that it matters, the game's over. I was obviously dominating. It's a skirmish to teach you how to play the game. It's not really hard. I just want to show the game off. I thought it was great. I thought it, it was just... I thought it, everything felt like it should. Aircraft, extremely strong against ground. Infantry, reliant on tanks. Tanks, reliant on infantry. Artillery, anti-air. Oh, it just felt good. The asset, the resources, the different stages of battle. It was great, great experience. I hope you enjoyed seeing this game. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.